All right, this is unit one, lesson two, transformations of functions. So our lesson essential question is, what do the differences between the equation of a function and the equation of its parent function tell you about the differences in the graphs of the two functions? So basically what all this means is where am I moving my graph to? Okay. So at the end of this lesson, you'll apply transformations to graph functions and write equations. All right, example one, translating a function. So graph the function f of x equals x squared for the domain negative two to two. The graph of g is obtained from the graph of f with the transformation three units down. How are the equations, domains, and ranges of f and g related? So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna graph the function they gave me. So x squared from negative two to two. Okay. You can use the slider to compare a point along the graph of f and g. So I notice that here at negative two, four, on the graph that I translated three units down, it's negative two, one. Notice that the x coordinates stay the same, but the y coordinates are subtracted by three. So x f of x to x f of x minus three equals x of g of x. So g of x equals f of x minus three. So basically I'm taking my y coordinate and I'm subtracting three. That's what happens when I translate a function down or up. Okay. So the domains of f and g are the same, negative two to two, and the range values of g are three units less than the range values of f. So for f, the range was zero to infinity, while the range now, or zero to four in this case, because we stopped at negative two, two, and for g of x, they're now negative three to one, okay? So a translation like this one is a particular kind of translation of a function, one that shifts each point on a graph the same distance and direction. Other kinds of transformations of a function either reflect its graph across an, x -ax an axis or stretch or compress its graph. In general, if g of x equals f of x plus k, then the graph of G is a vertical translation of the graph of F by K units. So either up or down. So we can see that the points stay the same. All right, B, graph the function F of X equals X squared for the domain negative two, two. The graph of the function G is obtained from the graph of F with the translation three units to the right. How are the equations, domains, and ranges of F and G related? So here's my original function, f of x. So again, it's that same domain, the negative two to two, and I moved it three units to the right. One, two, three. So I added three. So every point on the graph of g is three units to the right of the corresponding point on the graph of f. So x f of x equals x g of x plus three. The translation of the graph of f to the graph of g can be described as g x plus three equals f of x, or g of x equals f x minus three. The range values of f and g are the same. So the range stay the same, the, the y values stay the same. They're both still from four to zero or zero to four, okay? The domain changed because I shifted it either left or right, in this case, right. So the range values of f and g are the same. The domain values of g are three units more than the domain units, domain values of f. The domain of f is negative two, two, and the domain of g is one, five. So I added three to both of these. Negative two plus three gives me one, two plus three is five. So in general, if g of x equals f, x minus h, then the graph of g is a horizontal translation of the graph of f by h units. All right, so let's try it out. How did the transformation of f of x equals x squared minus g of x equals x squared minus three in part A affect the intercepts? So the x-intercepts, so from f to g, the y-intercept is translated down three units. f had one x-intercept at the origin and G has two x-intercepts on either 
side of the origin. So I had one here at y. The y has just moved down to three units because I subtracted three. I had one x-intercept here at the origin, but again, I moved that graph down, so now I have two intercepts. How did the transformation of f of x equals x squared to g of x equals x minus 3 squared in part b affect the intercepts? So again, I still have, if I look at this, my x and y intercept is here. At g, I don't have a y intercept anymore. It doesn't intercept the y axis, but at the x one stays the same. So from f to g, the x intercept translated right three units. F had one y intercept at the origin, but G does not have a y intercept. All right, example two, reflect a function across the x or y axis. So graph f of x equals 2x minus 6 and the function g of that, g, a reflection of the graph of f across the x-axis. How are their equations related? So here is my 2x minus 6, so it's a line. You can either, you can use the slider to reflect the graph, then drag control points to graph a new function. Graph f, then reflect every point on f over the x-axis to produce the graph of g by sending each point x, y on f to x, negative y. So this point, so if I look, so I reflect the point across the x-axis. So here's the x-axis here. So here's my point, right? Zero, negative six becomes zero, six. Again, the x stays the same, but the y changes. It becomes, it flips signs, okay? I then I reflect x comma y to x comma negative y, and then I draw the reflected line. So the y-intercept 0, negative 6 of f is reflected to the y-intercept 0, 6 of g. For any point x, y on the graph of f, there is a reflected point x, negative y, or x, negative f of x on the graph of g, so g of x equals negative f of x. The slope of the graph of f is 2, while the slope of the graph of g is negative 2. From the graph, you can see that g of x equals negative 2x plus 6. You can check that g of x equals negative f of x by substituting for f of x. So g of x equals negative f of x, g of x equals negative 2x minus 6, which does give me negative 2x plus 6. The function g of, x, g of x is the opposite of the function f of x. So I want to graph f of x equals 2x minus 6 and the function h, a reflection of the graph of f across the y-axis. How are their equations related? So you can use the slider to reflect the graph, then drag control points to graph a new function. So again, I'm graphing now for the y. Okay. So I reflect the point across the y-axis. So graph f then reflect each point on the graph of f over the y-axis to produce the graph of h. So the x-intercept 3, 0 of f is reflected to the x-intercept negative 3, 0 of h. So, zero, nine, six. so that doesn't change because 0 reflected is still 0. Okay. x, y becomes negative x, y and then I graph my line. So the slope of the graph of f is two and the slope of the graph of h is negative two. From the graph, you can see that h of x equals negative two x minus six. You can check that h of x equals f negative x by substituting for f negative x. So h of x equals f negative x, h of x equals two times negative x minus six, which is negative two x minus six. Function h of x has a slope that is opposite of the slope of f of x, but with the same y-intercept. All right, so let's try it. What is the equation for the reflected graph? Check my graphing. Reflect y equals x squared minus two across the x-axis. So the first thing that I wanna do is I actually wanna look at this graph. So I'm gonna go to Desmos. 
Okay. So I want to graph x squared minus 2. Okay. So that's the graph they gave me. They want, to, they want me to reflect this across the x-axis. So I'm going to look at this, 0, negative 2. Okay. I need to create a point that is opposite, a reflection of it. So 0, negative 2 becomes 0, positive 2. So 0, 2 becomes a point. And I can pick a point here. This one. 2, 2 becomes 2, negative 2. 2, negative 2. And then negative 2, 2 becomes negative 2, negative 2. Then I can graph a line or a parabola using these three points. So that graph becomes negative x squared plus 2. So I switch this sign to negative and this sign to positive. Okay, so for A, y equals negative x squared plus 2. All right, now I want to reflect that across the y-axis. So this actually, because I'm reflecting across the y-axis, so I would reflect each of these points. So this point, negative 2, 2, would become 2, 2, and 2, 2 would become negative 2, 2. This stays the same because 0 reflected across the y-axis stays the same. So it's actually going to be the exact same equation. y equals x squared minus 2. All right, example three, understand stretches and compressions. I want to graph f of x equals the absolute value of x with domain negative 4 to 4, and g of x equals 2 times f of x. How are the domains and ranges related? So use a table to find the points of the graph of g. So f of x, here's my blue function. That's my f of x. So negative x at x is negative 4. f of x is 4. Negative 2, 2, 0, 0, 2, 2, 4, 4. Okay, those are my points for my blue. Then I'm multiplying each of my values of f of x by 2. So f of negative 4 is 2 times, ne 2 times 4. So f of x. So f of negative 4 is 4. f of negative 2 is 2. So I do 2 times 4 it gives me 8. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 2 is 4. And 2 times 4 is 8. So I can see that the orange graph has doubled, multiplied by 2. Each y value is multiplied by 2. So the function with the given domain, the range of 0 to 4, is doubled for g to 0 to 8. That's the range, the y values. A transformation that increases the distance between the points of a graph and a given line by the same factor is called a stretch. The graph of G is a vertical stretch of the graph of F by a factor of 2. So G graph F of X equals the absolute value of X with domain negative 4 to 4, and H of X equals F times 2X. How are the domains and re ranges related? So unlike the first example where we were multiplying by the y values, 2 times the y values, in this case, we're going to multiply 2 times the x values. Okay, so here's my blue graph, which is my original. Okay, so the orange graph was way up here, right? My range is doubled. Here, for each corresponding output, the value of the input for h is half the value of the input for f. The two functions have the same range, but the values in the domain of h, negative 2, 2, are half as large as the values of the domain of f, negative 4, 4. 
a transformation that decreases the distance between the points of a graph and a given line by the same factor is called a compression. The graph of H is a horizontal compression of the graph of F by a factor of two. All right, so let's go ahead and try it. So show that J of X equals F times one half, F of one half X is a horizontal stretch of the graph of F. You can use the table to help you. So when I do this, I'm taking one half times my X value. So one half times my X value is negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. If AB is the domain of J of X, equals f of one half x, then j of a equals f one half a, and j of b equals f one half of b. So one half a, one half b, is the domain of F since AB equals two times one half A, one half B. The domain of F is stretched by two to create the domain of J. All right, so concept, stretches and compressions. So you have vertical or horizontal. So a stretch when K is greater than one or a compression when zero is less than K is less than one, okay? So that's for vertical, so that's the blue. So the black is the normal, the red is the stretch and the blue is the compression, vertical compression. You also have horizontal stretches and compressions. So horizontal stretches and compressions. So you're going this way as opposed to vertical going this way. Okay, so stretch when zero to K, zero is less than K less than one. So it's further out. And compression when you squish everything in closer together. Compression when X is greater than one. All right, example four, graph a combination of transformations. So the graph represents y equals f of x using y equals f of x. How can you graph a combination of transformations? So I want to graph y equals negative f of x plus two. Okay, so I graph g of x equals f x plus two, which is a translation of f, two units to the left, one, two. Okay. Then I'm going to reflect that across the x axis. So g of h of x equals negative f of x plus two, which is a reflection of g across the x-axis. The graph of h is a translation of f left two units and a reflection of x, a reflection in the x-axis. Okay, so for b, the graph represents y equals f of x. Using y equals f of x, how can you graph a combination of transformations? So I graph y equals one half f of x plus three. So the plus three, so the first thing I wanna do is the vertical compression. Um, so that's one half, which is a vertical compression of F by the factor of one half. So everything's shrunk down. And then I'm going to raise it three units up. So the graph of H is a vertical compression of F by the factor of one half, followed by a translation three units up. All right, so let's try it. Using the graph of F, graph the function y equals f 2x minus four. Drag the points to transform the graph of f. This is a horizontal, it's a vertical translation, four units down, and then there is a horizontal compression. So I'm gonna do that first, the horizontal compression first. Which means this point. So it was one, two, three, four. So it's going to go in two, one, half, and then this goes here. Okay, so basically what we did was we compressed everything, okay? Then from here, 
you're going to move everything down four units. So you want to make sure that you're doing that vertical or horizontal compression or stretch first and then moving it left, right, up, or down. So for this try problem, I have y equals f 2x minus 3 minus 2. So this is a, uh, goes down by 2, goes to the right 3 units, and this is a horizontal compression. So I want to do what's inside the parentheses first. I actually want to subtract three, or I want to move everything three units over first. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then one, two, three. Okay, from here, then I want to compress by two. So basically I take a half of everything, so half, Half. Half. Okay, and then I'm going to move everything down two units. So two, 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 two. All right, example five, identify transformations from an equation. So what transformations of f of x equals x squared result in the graph of the function g? g of x equals one negative one third x squared. Okay, so h of x equals f times one third x equals one third x squared represents a horizontal stretch of the graph of f by a factor of one third. g of x equals negative h of x equals negative f one third x equals negative one third x squared represents a reflection across the x axis of f of one third x. The graph of g is a horizontal stretch by the factor one third and a reflection across the x axis of the graph of h. So what transformations of f of x equals x squared result in the graph of the function g? Okay. So I have g of x equals x minus 4 squared plus 5. So looking at this, I can see that the x minus 4 represents a translation 4 units to the right. And that plus 5 is a, is a translation of 5 units up. So the graph of g is a translation of 4 units to the right and 5 units up of the graph of f. So what transformations of graph f of x equals the absolute value of x are applied to the graph of the function g? g of x equals one half x plus three. So the plus three tells me that I'm moving three units to the left and the one half tells me that it's a vertical compression. So a translation left three units and then vertical compression by the factor one half. For g of x equals negative absolute value of x plus two, that tells me that it's um, up two, and then it's over, it's a reflection across x-axis. Okay. So reflection across the x-axis and then a translation of two units up. Example six, write an equation from a graph. A scenic train ride makes trips on an old mining line. The graph shows the distance y in kilometers of the train from the station x minutes after the ride begins. What equation represents the distance from the station as a function of time? What is its domain? So the graph shows a reflection of an absolute value graph across the x-axis. The general form of this absolute value function is y equals negative a, absolute value of x minus h, plus k, where the point hk represents the vertex and negative a indicates that the graph opens downward. Substituting the points of the vertex 15, 15 for h and k gives the equation y equals negative a, absolute value of x minus 15 plus 15. To solve for a, you can use any points on the graph. 
Using the point 0, 0 to substitute for x, y in the equation simplifies the computations. So y equals negative a absolute value x minus 15 plus 15 equals 0 minus equals negative a absolute value 0 minus 15 plus 15. So 0 equals negative 15a plus 15. I subtract 15 from both sides. I get negative 15 equals negative 15a. So a equals 1. Now you can write the equation for distance as a function of time, y equals negative absolute value of x minus 15 plus 15. According to the graph, the train returns to its station after 30 minutes. So the function's domain is from zero to 30. How would the graph and equation be affected if the train traveled twice as far as the same amount of time? So since it's traveling twice as far, there would be a stretch by a factor of two. That's a vertical stretch. So the new equation would be D equals two negative absolute value M minus 15 oops, plus 15 or which is negative two, absolute value m minus 15 plus 15. All right, concept summary, transformation of functions. For a function f of x, the graph of f of x equals a times f of b of x minus h plus k represents a transformation of the graph of the function of translation, reflection, or stretching. Horizontal translations of f right to units it's altering h. So f of x becomes g of x equals f of x minus 2. Okay, so x squared plus x becomes x minus 2 squared plus x minus 2 equals x squared minus 3x plus 2. A vertical translation of f up 3 units. So f of x becomes h of x equals f of x plus 3. So x squared plus x would become x squared plus x plus 3. Reflection of f across the x-axis, so f of x becomes negative f of x, so x squared plus x would become negative x squared minus x. Reflection of x, f across the y-axis, f of x becomes f of negative x, so x squared plus x would become negative x squared plus negative x, or x squared minus x. A horizontal stretch of f by the factor one-half, so f of x becomes f of one half x. So f of x equals x squared plus x will become f of one half x, which equals one half x squared plus one half x or one fourth x squared plus one half x. And a vertical stretch of f by a factor of two becomes two times f of x. So f of x equals two x, x squared plus x becomes two times x squared plus x or two x squared plus two x. And that is the end of Unit 1, Lesson 2.